love about this is like it's not steampunk, it's just steam. This is just steam. <laughs> We had some of the more amazing things in San Francisco that I hadn't really connected before. Things like the Jeremiah O'Brien's giant steam engine and the, the uh, Musée Mécanique and all these things on the pier and the submarine from World War II, the Pompanito. We have this maker culture from the Maker Fair. It makes a lot of sense to show some of the earliest mechanical computing as well as just mechanical amazing things. The first ever Mechanicrawl. I'm Todd Lappin with Boing Boing TV and we are here as part of Mechanicrawl 2008, the first ever Mechanicrawl at the SS Jeremiah O'Brien, a World War II Liberty ship in San Francisco, California. Check it out. The Jeremiah O'Brien was built during World War II. It was part of a class of mass-produced ships, which were really an instrumental part of the American war effort during World War II. This is one of the last remaining ships that's still in working condition. All right, so the O'Brien was built before container ships. They didn't use the big boxes that we're used to now. This was in the days when things were on pallets or you'd have a sack. So what you have are all these cranes that would be used to haul freight, and then this would be a cargo hold. This is cargo hold two. This would slide away, and you would just lower stuff in the hold using these cranes. Let's go inside and check it out. All right, so we're here with Richard, and you are an engineer aboard the Jeremiah O'Brien? Uh, actually an oiler. An oiler. An oiler, and that's the one that oils the engine. How long have you been volunteering with, uh, uh, with the ship? Nineteen years now. So tell us a little bit about the O'Brien, about her history. Well, as, as you know, that she was built in 43, and uh, one of her means to fame is during the invasion of, of France that she made 11, 11 crossings from England to France carrying supplies and troops back and forth. The, the O'Brien was one of uh, a couple thousand Liberty ships. Tell me a little bit about the Liberty ships and what they represent. Well, there, was, there were slightly over 2,700 of these built and the original idea that the ships were being sunk faster than they could be built. So the, the British had to do something. So they they sent a team over to the United States to purchase ships that we weren't using. And they went to our Maritime Commission and this and that. And they were told it was better for them to have the ships built here than it was for them to go through this. The big idea was that this was a sort of a standardized design. It was one of the first kind of standardized transport ships. How did that work? I mean, you know, I know it took a little bit of while, but after, after some time, after some practice, they were able to crank these things out pretty oh, quickly. Yeah. This one took 63 days to build, and that was in 40, 43. And they built one over here at Kaiser Richmond in four days and 15 hours. And you figured that a third of the workforce was women, but uh, they did it. It's a big toy to us. I mean, after... You think you get tired of it, but uh, you still come back. You still come back, and uh, it, it's it's something something to be proud of. You figure you had a part of it in saving it, and you feel good. So, what good is a history museum without a good diorama? What you see is the ship is unloading cargo onto a temporary dock. From the temporary dock, cargo would go into these smaller landing craft, and then we go past a bunch of artificial breakwaters past a bunch of bigger landing craft, and then here onto the beach. And that's how cargo basically got from uh, England to France during the Normandy landing. Now we are actually in the engine room. This is like shrinking down and ending up inside the engine of your car, if your car were steam powered. This thing is huge. Check out these giant pistons. These things are going around. It is hot in here. But this is how the Jeremiah O'Brien got some forward propulsion. A little bit of trivia about the SS Jeremiah O'Brien engine room is that this is where actually the engine room scenes in the movie Titanic were filmed. And you can see why. There's uh, giant mechanical parts and it looks an awful lot like an engine room. Now Leonardo DiCaprio was not ever actually in this room as far as I know, but still you can feel his presence. There's a little bit of Leonardo in every turn of those pistons. You can feel it. Okay, we're here with John. He's going to tell us a little bit about how this 
steam engine works. We got a boiler, we make steam, it runs the engines, it runs all the auxiliaries. Uh, steam comes from the boiler through the superheater, and then it gets triple ex expanded three times through the engine, and then drops into about a 20 to 30 inch vacuum after that. So, what, roughly, what's the RPMs of the propeller at maximum speed? Under a design, design uh, state, with the, originally it was 76 RPM at full, full ahead. And how fast is uh, full ahead? It all depends on the outside conditions. About 10 or 11 knots, to be simple. What I love about this is like it's not steampunk, it's just steam. This is just steam. Peter, you're the uh, you're the chief of the boilers. Well, yes, I'm fireman water tender. Fireman water tender is responsible for maintaining steam pressure, level of water in the boiler, and the fires. We have two boilers in a vessel. Today we have only one online. That's the starboard boiler. We're using for the time two burners only, which is sufficient to maintain the steam pressure. This is the pressure which we have in the boiler. That's the temperature of the superheated steam which is coming out of the boiler going. So it looks like that steam is around 410? 410 degrees Fahrenheit. That goes to the main engine. This is the indication of the pressure on the feed pump for new boiler water. And this is the pressure of the superheated steam. Where does the uh, transfer of power happen from the steam here to the pistons over there? The the steam goes to the main engine, the steam is expanding in three stages from 200 pounds to almost a vacuum. By expansion of the steam, you're pushing your pistons down and you turn the main crankshaft. So what kind of fuel are you burning here? Bunker C, which is uh, what is left over from crude whenever you have been taking the gas and the diesel out of it. If you want to burn one pound of this oil, you need 13 pounds of air. You must have a mixture of air and fuel in such a way that you have a clean burning flame, no smoke. This is one of the Jeremiah O'Brien's three inch guns. Now a gun like this would have been used mainly for surface warfare, either for uh, shooting other ships or hopefully trying to take out a submarine that they might encounter. Uh, it could point up, so you could use it towards aircraft, but this was not a rapid firing gun, so uh, it would have been a pretty hard thing to do to shoot down an aircraft with one of these. But uh, it looks fantastic on the bow, it's lots of fun, and my favorite thing to do when I'm sitting here is to just look through the gun sight. I wish I had one of these to look at all the time. I just want one little piece of trivia. I held my 40th birthday party inside Cargo Hold 2, so it's a special place for me.